In this lesson, we'll learn what InDesign is, and then we'll take a quick tour around the InDesign user interface. All right, now before we get started, I'd just like to let you know that Digital Tutors would like to say thank you to iStock Photo and the artists Bim, Costin T, Best Photo, Spiderstock, and G. Brunden for their images that were used in this series of lessons. You can access these same images and thousands of others by accessing your exclusive Digital Tutors iStock discount at the following site. Alright, now if this is your first venture into the wonderful world of InDesign, then welcome. InDesign is a powerful layout tool that enables you to design for print, for web, interactive, and even mobile platforms without writing a single line of code. Now, not only does InDesign excel at generating vector-based graphics as well as type, but it also can bring in assets that were generated in other applications. Maybe it's a photograph or some other kind of image. Maybe it's a manuscript or even a letter. Maybe an illustration or a logo. Now, not only does InDesign interface well with other creative suite applications like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, or even Adobe InCopy, but it also interfaces really, really well with applications from Microsoft Office. Maybe it's Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. Any assets that were created in any of those applications, InDesign can bring them in and use them in an InDesign project. Now we'll take a look at several of these things in the upcoming lessons, but what I'd like to do here for you first is take sort of a quick tour around InDesign's interface just to get you used to it here. Now before we go any further, we're going to need to create a new document here. So let's come up to the File drop-down menu. We'll choose New, and there's three options here, one for Document, Book, and library. We're going to choose Document, and notice there is actually a keyboard shortcut next to Document of Control N. So I'll go ahead and select that here, and you can see we get this new document dialog that opens up. Now there's a lot of options here, we won't talk about all these. The first thing I want to direct your attention to is the intent option. Now just because the intent is currently set at print doesn't mean the document that we're creating has to be used in a print scenario. Now we can click that down and the other option is for web. Now if we change that over, notice that several things change down here below. We changed from points to pixels, one, as a unit of measure, and our page size has changed to a different default, some things like that. So I'm going to switch that back to print, and then we're going to bounce down here and set the number of pages for our document. Right now, the default is one page. I want something with a few more pages, so let's just set this to maybe six pages, and I am going to leave this box that says facing pages checked. Now we're going to come down here and take a look at this page size setting here. Notice it's by default set to letter. Now we can drop that down and you can see several preset page sizes here, uh, whether it's a business card, uh, even some resolutions. Now we can also come in and we can create a custom page size just simply by entering in those measurements here in the width and height fields. You can see we also have uh, quick change orientation buttons here, changing it from portrait to landscape. And then we have some settings below for columns and margins. We're actually going to talk about those a little bit more in an upcoming lesson, but let's go ahead and click on this More Options button here because there's even more options in this dialog. You can see here we also have some Bleed and Slug options. Now we're not actually going to talk about Bleed and Slug in this course, but let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and click that Fewer Options button. I just want you to know that those are there. Those are really related more to the print world. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit click OK at this point. And you can see here that InDesign has created a new file for us. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just sort of take a tour around what we see here. Now, in the center area here in the middle, you can see what looks like a piece of paper or a page. This is our page one of our document. And you can see anything inside this page is going to be a part of our document that actually gets saved out. Now, over here on the right, this is actually called the pasteboard. This is uh, something that should be treated like the work area. If you're needing to build something, you can do it over here. Just make sure, and before you actually export your file out to PDF or whatever ever other file format you need, uh, just make sure and drag that over into the active area here. So, 
I know that InDesign's interface can be kind of confusing if this is your first time opening it up. So uh, let's go ahead and just kind of break it down by area. The first thing you need to know is that everything in InDesign is considered to be a panel. So over here on the left we have our tool panel, which is where InDesign stores all of its tools. And we'll be talking about several of these tools again in upcoming lessons here. Now over here on the right uh, we have a series of buttons. Now this is called our panel dock. The panel dock is a highly customizable area and it's meant to be customizable so that uh, however you feel comfortable working in this interface you can set that panel dock up to fit your needs. Now if we click on each one of these buttons you're going to see that a little window flies open to the left and you can see that there's several tabs up here at the top. We have one for pages, layers, and links. Now you can see those corresponding buttons right here below the pages button and what this is called is, is a panel group. Now we can take these buttons here we can reorder them within the panel group if we want to or we can even just click and drag them in, into another panel group if we wanted that uh, particular panel to live with another set of uh, another set of panels. I tend to keep those related panels together so let's go ahead and drag that layers panel right back up where it was at. Now we can come in here and let's say that we want one of these panels uh, disconnected from this panel dock. We can actually grab the tab here and just drag it out and away and you can see that we can break that panel free from the restraints of the panel dock and we can float that around. A lot of them we can resize by clicking this bottom right corner and dragging and uh, you know we can just position that wherever we'd like to position it. So maybe we come over here and we drag our color one down here and maybe our swatches panel comes up here. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever feels good for you. Now if we ever need to reattach these panels back over here in the panel dock all we need to do is grab them by the tab. Let's go ahead and just drag it over and you can see it highlights in blue and we'll drop that right back where it was at. We'll go ahead and drag the swatches panel back over, snap it in. And we'll drag that color one back in and snap it in there with, with swatches. Alright, now uh, notice here that the panel dock is currently uh, a width that accommodates for both the icon and the title of the panel. Now I typically will minimize this down just by mousing over the left border of the uh, panel dock and just clicking and dragging and I like to minimize that down to where it just shows the icons uh, because once you've worked in InDesign for a little while you'll come to know these panels by their icon and you won't need to see their names. Now at f if at first uh, you're still getting used to those panels you may want to actually expand this out to where you can see the entire panel dock and you can do that by clicking on this little double arrow up in the top right hand corner and you can see here that now now that we've clicked that the entire panel groups are visible to us. They don't actually fly out to the left anymore. Now we can actually do the exact same thing over here with the tool panel. Clicking that little double arrow switches it to a two column tool panel. Now again I typically like to roll with uh, as much screen real estate as possible available to me so I will minimize both those down but let's say that we have drug some of these panels around and uh, maybe we even drug our tool panel out and reposition that sort of like that. Now what if we've messed up our workspace and we want to reset it back to its defaults here. Now this is currently the Essentials workspace. You can see that because it says Essentials right up here. If I mouse over that button and click that, you can see there's an option to reset the Essentials workspace here. So I'll go ahead and just reset that here and you can see we're back to where we started. Now the last area you need to know about is this big thick bar up here. This is called the Control Panel. Now the Control Panel may seem a little intimidating, uh, especially because depending on the tool you have selected, the look of it may change. But what you need to know about the control panel is that while yes there are a lot of things we can control up here in the control panel, uh, typically there are the exact same controls somewhere over here in one of the panels in the panel dock. Now this is only a portion of the panels available to the panel dock. You can find the rest of them up here under the window drop down menu. You can see there's quite a few of them. We'll actually talk about a few more of these in the upcoming lessons, but let me go ahead and just share with you a couple quick keyboard shortcuts that we're going to use for navigating around our document.
and we'll be using these quite a bit. So the first one is the spacebar. The spacebar is going to be the hotkey to uh, switch over to the hand tool. And as long as you have that held down, we can click anywhere in the pasteboard or our document and then drag and we can navigate around our document here. Now notice as I drag down, you can see here that pages two and three are facing each other. Sort of like a book. They've actually got the gutter or the area where the pages are glued together right here in the center. This is because we had that facing pages boxes checked when we created this document. If we uncheck that, these pages would be, they would be all separate, sort of like page one is up here. Now, one other keyboard shortcut I want to share with you before we wrap this lesson up is the zoom in and zoom out keyboard shortcut. This is a really handy one, and it basically is a, a hotkey to access this magnifying glass tool, tool right here, or the zoom tool. And the keyboard shortcut for that is to hold down control and spacebar if we want to zoom in, and then we can click, or we can drag a marquee to zoom in on a certain area. And if we want to zoom out, all we need to do is hold down Control Alt Spacebar. And we can just click a few times and you can see we're zooming out here. All right. Now with that said, we're ready to move forward, but we shouldn't probably go any further than learning what vector objects are and what tools that InDesign has for creating vector objects. So in the next lesson, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here and we'll learn how to draw vector objects here in InDesign.